You're here to see how to build a jewel thief, so let's jump into it. If you're new to building electronics, this is a good circuit for practice. Mine is going to look ugly, but it'll still work. I'll explain what a jewel thief is as we go. I'm starting by making a toroid inductor. Using two wires, I wrap them around the inductor core until the core is filled. These wires are 22 gauge, and I wrap them both the same number of times. I'm using two different colors of wires, green and red, to help me keep track of which is which. After wrapping them, I mix up some epoxy and coat the toroid with it. When the epoxy sets, I strip back the wires and solder it to the perf board. Keep track of which wires are which. I have the four connections labeled here. The schematic that I'm following is a basic one that I got from Wikipedia. It uses four components plus a battery. The second part that I'm adding is this 1K resistor. I want to connect G1 to one side of the resistor, and it does not matter which side of the resistor we connect it to. The other side of the resistor needs to connect to R2. At first, I accidentally connected R1. Don't connect R1 to the resistor. If you do, you're going to have a bad time. This red wire is for the battery positive. It also connects to the same resistor at the same point as R2. The third part is this transistor. You could also use any of these other transistors. I place it on the perf board with a flat side facing away from the toroid. For now, I'm just soldering one of the leads to hold it onto the board. Now it's time to solder R1 to its true destination. I route it around to meet up with the collector of the transistor. And G2, I route that around to connect to the base of the transistor. It's the middle pin. The fourth part is the LED. The LED that I'm using is one that I salvaged from another board, so the leads are already cut short. The emitter of the transistor will connect to the negative pin of the LED. Since the LED leads are short, I'm going to create a path with solder. I also connect a black wire to the same point for the battery negative. The next thing that I did was a mistake. I'm showing it here because it's an easy mistake to make. I made a path from the positive LED lead to the positive connection of the circuit. This does not hurt anything, but it also does not do what the jewel thief is made to do. I cleaned up that mess, so now let's make the correct solder connection. The LED positive lead needs to connect to the same wire as R1. It also needs to pass over the wire for G2 without connecting to it. I'm going to use this jumper wire on the other side of the perf board to do this. As I'm doing this, I'll explain what a Jill Thief is. A Jill Thief takes a low DC voltage and boosts it up to a higher voltage. You can even take a battery that other devices will consider to be drained and get a bit more of the energy out of it. You won't get much current from it, but you can get enough to power a 3 volt LED with a battery that's drained to less than a volt. That's why it's referred to as a jewel thief. It's almost like stealing energy from a dead battery. And by the way, some people call it a zombie circuit for the same reason. This next step gives me a convenient way to connect to a variety of batteries. After slotting a disc magnet onto each of the power wires, I solder a thumbtack onto each of those wires. Let 
Now it's complete, so let's do a couple demonstrations with some AA batteries. This first battery is not new, but it's also not dead. You can see that it lights up the LED. The next battery that I used is drained and most devices will consider it dead. And again, the LED lights up. With this circuit, the toroid may buzz a bit, so don't worry if it makes a high-pitched sound. And that's a basic Jewel Thief. There are some more complicated designs, so leave a comment and let me know if you'd like to see me build one of them into a useful project. Thank you for watching.